Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. What's that? You like my horns? Thank you. I grew them myself. You want your own set of horns, but you haven't been able to grow any? That's okay. Come with me. We can get horny together. Okay, so to make your very own set of horns, you will need two paper towel rolls. I forgot you need two, so I started off with one, but you will need two. A pair of scissors, a hot glue gun, some liquid latex, acrylic paint. For this set of horns, I'm going to be making some demon horns, so I decided to go red and black. A chip brush, or a more coarse brush, as well as standard flat paint brushes. A headband, and lastly, bobby pin. For this set of horns, I figured this is pretty basic. You paint black, white, black, white. That doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. But for these horns to get the natural look, there's a little bit of a gradient on here going from dark to light. And I don't know how well you can see, there's texture that shows up. Um, but to get that, you have to do some dry brushing, which is, you know, pretty, pretty easy to do. But if you've never done it before, it might be nice to see it done. So I figured I'd do that. The cutting of the of the rings that we're gonna do, I just kind of eyeball. I don't get too crazy about it because they're horns and they're supposed to be natural. And no horns are a gonna be the same and b gonna be the same to each other. I feel like they're like like eyebrows. How we say they're sisters, not twins. I feel like that's what you're going for for your horns. You want them to look similar, but they don't have to look exactly the same. So, here we go. We're starting. Damn. I pinched my finger in the scissors. So now we have our two sides of our horns, and one's a little lopsided, but that's okay. It's gonna be fine. Um, so from this, you want to just start cutting rings. Roughly three quarters of an inch. Let's go. There. And if you can get it in one cut, that's helpful. But if you're like me and you use the same set of scissors to do everything, they get dull pretty quickly. And these are new scissors too. So we have our base. This is where we're starting. So now we want ring two. And now, this is where we start We start the actual process. So you have to make sure these rings can tuck into each other. So for your first one, you don't have to cut it. But for your second ring, you make a little snip and tuck it inside the other one. And you can see, I don't know how clear this is gonna be and I apologize, but when you tuck it inside the other one, it'll overlap on itself to fit inside the other one. So just whatever overlaps, cut that bit away. Boop. And then you're just gonna glue it inside the other one. And so begins our horns. The part that you cut is gonna be the back. I don't know if you can tell again, the front is pretty rounded, but the back kind of comes to a point. Um, so wherever your cuts are, that's gonna be the back side of your horns. So as you, as you tuck them into each other, the back side, the open side, is gonna be getting further and further nestled in to the ring before it to give you that angle as you go. So let's take our handy dandy glue gun. And we're just gonna go around inside. Get in there inappropriate joke. Okay, so you got it got it nicely nestled in there. It's glued in place. You can glue the seam shut. I don't think this one really needs it because it seemed like it lined up it seems like it lined up pretty nicely that seam. Um but you can glue it in place and as you can see, maybe you can see it is slightly slightly slanted back, which will start to give us our our horn shape. Um so we'll do that and then we'll do it on the other one. And I like to work back and forth on them so they look semi-consistent. I feel like if you do all one and then try to mimic it, 
it might not turn out as well. I don't think you need to see me gluing all of these unless I say something particularly interesting, in which case I'll stop, but I'll probably just speed this up so you don't have to watch me sit here. So while I was recording this video, there was some drama going on with the neighborhood wildlife, and I thought I would share that so you weren't just listening to the void through these parts. So basically there is a neighborhood cat named Biscuit, and Biscuit comes around and visits quite often, and just says hi and plays and goes on his way. And one day he was in the backyard playing with a chipmunk, and it looked rather tame, rather playful. But then we got a gift on our back porch in the form of a dead chipmunk, so not so playful. Ooh, wait, I think I'm gonna say something you need to know. You better lose yourself in the music the moment you want it, you better never let it go. You only get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. Anyone? Anyone? Eminem? Okay, not something you needed to know. So, while I'm recording this video, I see Biscuit in the backyard playing, quote unquote, with another chipmunk. And I was like, uh-uh, we ain't doing this, we ain't getting another dead chipmunk. So I went outside to check on them, and Biscuit's stalking this chipmunk, I guess you could say. But like, chipmunk walks. Biscuit follows, and then Biscuit just kind of taps him on the head, and then Chipmunk walks, and it seems very like we're just playing. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm like, the Chipmunk's kind of being a little spastic. I'm a little concerned. And back to the tutorial. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna do while we're here and the glue is out and I'm making a mess is for the bottom, I put in this little attachment so it can slide on to the headband if you choose to use a headband. Um, I've done both the elastic and the headband and I, I think the headband works better. So if you can find a semi-thick headband, um, I think those work better than the elastic. The elastic you would just cut a little slit in and slide the elastic through and you don't need to do that bottom piece. But I'm gonna put those in now because I decided I do like those. And that I wanna make like a semi thick coat. So I go up to check on the chipmunk and neither of them seem particularly phased by me. Like the chipmunk's moving a little bit weird through the grass. I don't know if he's just having a struggle with the tall grass or there's something else going on. So I go to pick him up to see if he's okay and he goes darting across the yard and up a tree. So I'm like, okay, if there was an issue and Biscuit wasn't being nice, clearly Chipmunk can get away if he needs to. So I go back inside and we'll come back for the rest of the story. So we're gonna add the latex to these, which again, I'll probably go into um, time-lapse mode for it. The only thing that you really have to worry about during this is making sure you brush with the direction that you want. So. You just want to brush along with the texture. That is the only thing to be concerned about. And I think I usually do about two or three coats. Um, so we get our liquid latex. If we can open it. Ooh, I'm sure it's gonna smell like ammonia. This will get stuck in your brush. So it's good to have a crappy brush. You can get it out if you either continuously wash out your brush in between with soap and water or you let it get all gunked up and it'll become one giant globule. And then if you soak it in soap and water, you can usually pull it off and it'll come off in one thing. Um, but I'm gonna be just using liquid latex and painting around these until I'm satisfied with the texture, as you can see. But just painting along with the rings to get those lines to copy the way we want it to go. Um, and that'll really help with the dry brushing later because it'll give you indents, it'll give you high points and low points that the paint will fall into. And we're back. So later that day, I see Chipmunk and Biscuit in the backyard again. And I'm like, guys, what are we doing? So again, I go out to check on them and I'm like, they seem fine. Biscuit's following him and kind of like swatting at him every now and then, but Chipmunk just seems like he kind of rolls around and then goes on his way and is not running, is not fearful, doesn't seem. So I'm like, all right, you guys do your thing. Biscuit, 
don't freaking kill this chipmunk. So I go back inside and I turn around and I see Biscuit in the neighbor's backyard with a chipmunk hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So I run outside and I'm like, Biscuit, get the freaking chipmunk out of your mouth. I was like, did you kill it? Did you kill this poor chipmunk? <laughs> so I go up to the fence, which is a chain link fence so we can see each other. Sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave you in suspense here because it's time to get back to the tutorial. We painted on the liquid latex. I think I did about four layers. I did wanna show you that I had let the uh, latex just glob up on my paintbrush and then I just ran it under some soap, under some soap. I ran it under some water with some soap and mushed it around and now I have my little latex globule, um, but my brush is completely clean. So you can bring a brush back to life if you uh, wash it out, the liquid latex will come out. Only, I don't, not normal little brushes, chip brush, it'll do it. So, like I said, for these, I'm going to use red as my base and then black as the dry brushing. And here we go. Again, I'm gonna paint along with these lines to kind of emphasize that texture. Now back to the soap opera. Biscuit's just looking at me. Chipmunk's just chilling in his mouth, like hanging by his little scruff of his neck. And I'm like, Chipmunk doesn't seem harmed. Biscuit doesn't seem bloody or feral. I don't know, he's just chilling. And I'm like, Biscuit, get back over here and put that chipmunk down. <laughs> As if Biscuit can understand me. And we'll be back in just a second for the riveting conclusion. Okay, so I'm back. I have painted three layers of just red paint on my horns. Now we're gonna just dry brush. Um, I do want to say something while I'm thinking about it. So typically when you're painting anything that's latex, you would not just use acrylic paint. Latex is stretchy and acrylic paint is not as stretchy. For this purpose, we don't need the stretchiness of the latex. So I have painted on my other sets of horns with just acrylic paint. And um, I've had these horns for quite a few years at this point and they haven't had an issue because the uh, the latex's stretchiness is not needed for this. It's not like one of the benefits of using latex in this particular project. But typically if you're using latex for a mask or for a prosthetic or some other means, part of the appeal of the latex is that it does have its rubberiness to it. And so you would typically do Pax paint if you were trying to paint latex, which is a mix of prosade and acrylic paint, and I think the the percentage is 50 50. I'm not 100% sure, it's been a while, but yes, I just wanted to put that out there. Typically, when you're painting latex, you don't just use acrylic paint, but for this purpose, it doesn't make a difference. So now we are going to do the dry brushing. So, for the whole process of making these, when we've done the painting and the latex, We've been going, get out of there. We've been making sure to go with the grain so we keep the, the, the texture going in the same direction. But for this part, when you're dry brushing, I'm just gonna do a little demonstration. If, you're, if you were to dry brush with the lines, your bristles would fall into those low points and would defeat the purpose. But if you brush against those lines, it'll just go over top and won't get into the grooves and you'll just be hitting the high points of your texture. So this is the only point in this process where you will be going against the green. Um, and you want very little paint on your brush, like very, very little. And you're just gonna, I don't know if I can do this, just lightly brush. And I think that spot is too dark, so I'm just gonna wipe it a little bit. And yeah, that's what that's gonna be the process for this. And I think I'm gonna try to like ombre it or do a bit of a uh, a fade. And I want the top part to be darker, and I'm gonna gradually get it lighter towards the end. If it if you have too much paint, you can just wipe it off or use water to wipe it off. I'm gonna go and and dry brush. And finally, for the much anticipated conclusion. So Biscuit just stares at me and I'm like, Biscuit, get back over here and put the freaking chipmunk down. 
So Biscuit hops up on the fence, climbs back down into our yard, and puts a chipmunk on the grass. And the chipmunk goes on its way, and Biscuit goes on its way. And I'm like, what the frick is wrong with you two? So that was a little saga that took place. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand. You guys are both psychopaths. <laughs> so after recording this video, <laughs> I am in my front yard. And across the street in the front yard, I see Biscuit again with a freaking chipmunk in his mouth and I'm like up at the top of my driveway like far back in my yard and Biscuit is far back in the neighbor's yard and I'm yelling from across the street to tell Biscuit to put the freaking chipmunk down and what does he do he just looks at me and I'm like Biscuit you know what I'm saying put the chipmunk down so he puts the chipmunk down and they go on their way I'm like what is wrong with you guys so that is my little biscuit chipmunk drama that took place while this video is filming. I don't know if they have some sort of understanding and this is just a game they play or if the chipmunk is a masochist, but yeah, that's, that's that drama that took place and I thought I'd share. I'm afraid of getting carried away, so I think I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna let them dry for two seconds before I put them on my head. Okay, so this is it. This is it. We are done. We have completed painting. They are horns. They are devilish. We're gonna put them on. So I think in addition to this, I would just use bobby pins and pin them in place. But they are done. And I think we might try to actually show what these babies can really do for a look. So I am going to attempt, again, new to video, not new to video editing, but it's been a hot minute. So we're going to try to see if we can do a semi-smooth transition. Wish me luck. One, two, three. Oh, who is she? So this is the final look we went with for these horns. I did my little demon look. Um, I think I kind of look like the guy from Powerpuff Girls, the red lobster guy. Um, but this is the final look. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope this was semi-interesting and informing if you are actually interested in making them. If you do end up making them, please let me know how it went. And yeah, if you end up doing making them or doing any kind of look with them, I'd love to see. So feel free to tag me. I know it's a weird time for everyone. And if you're like me during this pandemic, I have just worked and come home. Those are, those are the only things I've really done. <laughs> um, so it's fun if you have something weird and silly you can do when you're stuck at home. So I hope maybe this is something you can do while you're stuck at home. Um, or if it's just an escape, I hope it was a fun little escape for you. Yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it inspires you to do something weird and creative and just uh, try something new. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi. We did this earlier today. What are we doing? Did you hurt him? Or is he just a spaz? Why do we play these games? Is this the same chipmunk? Are you actually playing? <laughs>